one of the things that you would hear in the black cautious community, the uh, pan-African community, black first, blackity black, blah, blah, blah. One of their favorite talking points of which is supposed to be real is their being so proud to be a descendant of royalty. First of all, let's let's <clears throat> let's just go ahead and keep this real. It is impossible for all of us to be descendants of royalty. That's that's impossible. You don't even hear the American Caucasian people here claim to be kings and queens. If everybody <laughs> if everybody is kings and queens, who were they ruling? Who were their servants if everybody was kings and queens? Somebody had to be the farmer. Somebody had to be uh, the janitor. Somebody had to uh, build the buildings. Everybody cannot sit around and be royalty. Another thing about ancient kings and queens, to my knowledge, I could be wrong, but a lot of these rulers, many of them, they were able to take that title or position because they were in battle. They were soldiers. And they were fighters and they rose up in the ranks and got to the point where they were able to secure this position of royalty. Y'all ain't fighters at all. You don't fight for nothing except maybe uh, some hair weave. You'll fight over hair weave. You fight over a, a milkshake at McDonald's. <laughs> you, you will fight over uh, what's that? Uh, the chicken sandwich for Popeye. <laughs> you will you will do that, but when it comes to to doing something that actually could put you in a position of being a king or a queen or a ruler in some kind of capacity, you're not willing to do those things. <clears throat> you're only interested in uh, things with no substance, silly stuff. You you would give your life and fight over a chicken <laughs> for a chicken sandwich. You will fight for little tiddlywink, rinky-dink, nothing stuff. But you won't fight. You won't die. But you want to be called. <laughs> you want to be called king and queen. Such a silly people. Now, also, this is a form of people who suffer from self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Here you are. Matter of fact, that's that's the reason why Superman was created. You had two young boys, and they basically was nerds and skinny or whatever. They used their imagination to create this character to be what they could not be. Superman can fly. Superman 
got all this strength. And everybody loves Superman. And that's what we do in the black conscious, pan-African type community. That's what they do. They, I'm a king. I'm a queen. They use this because they suffer from low self-esteem. Because in real life, in real life, those young boys was nothing like Superman. In real life, these people are nothing like royalty. They are not kings and queens. Even so, do you understand what you want to be? This king and this queen. Let's let's examine this a little closer. It sounds good. All right. Now, one thing we know about royalty is that they used to practice something called incest. That's what they did because they did not want their special blood, royal, divine blood to get mixed up with the ordinary peasants. So you had fathers that would get their daughters pregnant and mothers would, have, would get pregnant by their sons. And y'all want to be part of all this kind of good stuff. <laughs> Y'all want to be part of this wonderful royalty king and queen history. So you wouldn't mind sleeping with your mama. You wouldn't mind sleeping with your daddy or your brother or your sister or your cousin. Because you don't want to get your blood mixed with somebody else. But as time goes on. These idiots began to understand that this hillbilly activity was causing their blood to get too weak and the offspring was uh, suffering from disabilities and all kinds of uh, hereditary ailments because of this inbreeding <laughs> Incest is inbreeding. And you want to be part of this legacy, this, this royalty. Now, a king and a queen, a president, these type of titles, you're supposed to be there to serve the people. Kings and queens, you're supposed to look out for what is in the best interest of your people. And prior to civilization, I guess to a certain point, that's what they were trying to do. But somewhere, I'm not that smart, so y'all can correct me. But when you study Civilization, that's something else y'all like to brag about. You know, the Africans, uh, we, uh, we, I don't know where y'all get this we from, but we started civilization. There's nothing civil about civilization. All civilizations was created due to violence. You had a tribe that was large and they needed resources for their people and they would murder. They would go to war and murder their neighbors. That's how civilizations was created. It was not nothing civil about it. That's how ancient Egypt was created or ancient Rome. Civilization was created by violence. There's nothing civil about civilization. And anybody who becomes or you are born in civilization, your right as an individual to do for yourself is taken away 
So now you depend upon the resources of that civilization in order for you to survive when you should have the right to be able to survive on your own. But within civilization, they hoard land, they hoard all the resources. And if you don't become part of the, of the, of the civilization, unless you want to live off the grid, as they say in modern times, then you must submit to the powers that be. And who is the powers that be? The kings and the queens. Were they good people or bad people? I don't care if you're in Europe or Africa. To my knowledge and from what I've read and studied, the majority of these kings and these queens, they were ruthless dictators. They did not look out for what is in the best interest of the people. They wanted the people to serve them. And that's what you see. The people serving these kings and these queens. That's why in England, they still have a royal family, but the royal family has no power. They took that away from them. It's just the royal family in England or Britain is nothing but costume jewelry. They serve no real purpose. It's just like, this is what we used to do. They have no, no power. Now, in primitive situations, I remember I, I was watching a program. I don't know if this was Africa. I think it was. But there was a village, had a king and a queen and other uh, elders in the uh, tribe. And uh, you couldn't tell who was who. The king and the queen and all the elders, all the people who were the governors of the tribe, they all lived the same. They even had a class system. You couldn't tell the rich from the poor. Whatever anybody had, the tribe shared. They slaughtered a goat. Everybody ate goat. You go out and get carrots and dig up potatoes or whatever, everybody eat potatoes. Everybody shared. See, under our civilization, everybody's out for themselves. Nobody share. Matter of fact, now you tell your children, you shouldn't be selfish and greedy. Share. A lot of us tell our children that. But when we get grown, some of us have an overabundance of resources. We don't share nothing. We talk about generational wealth. We ain't going to share a damn thing except with our family inbreeding wealth. That's what I call it. Inbreeding wealth. Y'all call it generational wealth. There's another tribe. I believe it's the Maasai. The Maasai people. They have uh, that type of uh, relationship among themselves. You can't tell who uh, the, the, the elders are, the ones who are the governors. You can't tell who's rich, who's poor. They, they, they share. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. We are adults, and we've been living with these races, and we are impressed by ancient idiots. They was idiots. Why do you think these civilizations fall? When you did not human beings, justice, and freedom. It's bound to fall. I don't care if you're black, white, Chinese, because it is natural for the human being to want to be free. It, that's natural. And that's why we live in the situation we live right now. Human beings all over the world denied freedom and justice. All these Rulers, corrupt.